Tonight, ABC anchor David Muir was in Ohio, gaining entry to a somber setting, the plane that carried Kennedy to Dallas 50 years ago. And then after those shots rang out, became a kind of monument to a stun and change nation. And David Muir is here now. David. Diane, good evening to from what they call Kennedy's Air Force One. This is the plane that carried the president and the first lady. And right here behind me, this is the doorway. The president walked through one final time on that day in Dallas, waving to the thousands who were gathered there to see him. And as you point out tonight, we take you inside. And the crowd yelled. President and Kennedy the and the first lady the emerging from Air Force One at Love Field, November 22nd, 1963. Thousands waiting, so many holding signs. Welcome, Jack. We love you, Jackie. And looming over them in nearly every image, the presidential jet that would soon play a far more profound role. So this is it, Kennedy's Air Force One? This is Kennedy's Air Force One. The first Boeing designed for a president, but no one could have prepared for this. This is the aircraft that carried John Kennedy to Dallas, and this is the aircraft that carried his body back to Washington, D.C. You can see the cockpit. Today, they took us inside. The cockpit where President Kennedy's pilot, Colonel James Swindle, so often sat, seen there on the left, on the ground in Dallas less than an hour that day before learning the president had been shot. Audio from the cockpit. We have a request from uh, Chief Staff Office to know if you have uh, But before taking off, they would pull the shades. They actually close the shades. Yes, they close the shades because no one could tell if there's a sniper outside waiting for another shot or if this is the beginning of World War III. The 36th president about to be sworn in. This is where the moment took place. This is, this is the most important place on the entire aircraft. And Mrs. Kennedy stood right here, just at this very place. They were standing here. On board Air Force One, that it was stifling. They had turned off the air conditioners that day so they could take off more quickly. As quickly as possible, yes. And you could imagine the heat building in the plane. The heat and everyone's, their heart rate's up. And they're, they're breathing harder. This is, they're choking back tears. In that space, 16 square feet, 27 witnesses. And it was LBJ who asked Mrs. Kennedy if she would stand here for the oath as well. Yes. Standing in her blood-stained suit, Mrs. Kennedy wanted it that way. It's been said that she said they should see what they did. Yes, they should see what they did. And inside the stateroom on the plane, soon a new president at work. And the whole time, Mrs. Kennedy is in the back of the As plane. In the back of the aircraft. And she's with her husband. With the casket. With the casket. Sitting beside her husband's casket, placed inside the cabin, because the crew made sure of it. The flight crew refused to put the president's body below the cabin. Yes, the cargo hole is directly below us. They loved the president and they refused to put his body in the cargo hold. Pulling out four seats, sawing into the bulkhead to get the president on board one last time. You know, it was really unmistakable today when they gave us access to Air Force One here where they actually cut into the bulkhead. They never actually covered that up for several presidents who used this plane after President Kennedy. And one thing you learn here at the National Air Force Museum, Diane, on the outside of this plane, President Kennedy knew the power of an image, which is why he asked his wife, Jackie Kennedy, to team up with the designer. They chose the colors, the font for the United States of America that you still see traveling the globe today on Air Force One, Diane. Reaching across all those years, it is stunning to see you on board tonight, David. Thanks so much. And by the way, after that moment, seven other American presidents used that plane.